Hello everyone, I'm Renown Zero, and we are back again talking about Buster Baxter and actual fandom once again because they both just cannot stop talking about the Ripperverse. It's it's like they just act like children most of the time. And just a reminder, actual fandom did make a one hour and twenty two minute video researching Air July, and we're gonna go through it tomorrow on a live stream around noon. Is what I'm planning. A little nervous about it. This might be my first time streaming on YouTube, but I told myself I wanted to do a live stream when I hit 1K and monetization. And since we have, I want to be able to do that. So I'm excited to do all of that for you. Well, let's get into the video here. Currently sitting at $2.211 million for the ISM2 pre order campaign. 11,887 cover A's were sold, 12,317 cover B's were sold, 3,834 cover C's were sold, 2,302 cover D's were sold, 2,159 books were donated to comic books for kids with 8,817 total purchasers. Just under two weeks left to go on the campaign, uh, although books will still be available for sale after the campaign ends so if you miss out on on cover D you'll still be able to get that all the other covers will know and I believe won't be available after unless it's like a special occasion I think that's how it usually works but moving on over to Dick Masterson's or Buster Baxter's Twitter he asked 22 hours ago should we do a biggest problem in ISO number two bonus episode tomorrow of course he puts two yes because he knows he'll get completely destroyed if he puts a no so he retweeted it because you know he just has to right he has to do that because he literally has nothing else as we keep scrolling up here don't post strictly Jake says don't post spoilers for his comic he's trying to sell you don't own the artwork it's not a false anything, because it's not. It's not false flagging when you're promoting pirated material illegally. Same thing. Air July stands crying about me spoiling the plot of Isom 2. Isom goes to this place with a random lady and rescues his friend Sam, which... It's funny, he puts the name of the person he's saving, but not the name of the person who's... You know, the random lady. I'm not going to say the name, because it would be a spoiler from these monkeys I guess they were going to do this to Sam I don't know it was really silly and poorly written again an opinion that I wish you would understand sounds ridiculous and is only your opinion it's not gospel but it seems like you're never going to learn that it isn't a factual statement for you to say that it's poorly written you're never going to understand that it's only an opinion and again, even after you got called out by Air July himself in Yellow Flash on a flashcast, and you apologized, you're still acting like a crybaby about this book that you did not obtain legally. It's so weird that you act this way. He responds to this tweet from Air July. This is the kind of marketing Eric is good at. Tribalism generates sales. I don't know what this has to do with tribalism, but he's one of the worst writers on earth. That's still an opinion. The sooner he acknowledges his failings as a creator, what failings? He has more money than you. He's made more money than you'll ever see in your life. And you sit here and cry about it literally every single day like a, like a child. The sooner his pig pigs will get a decent product. We've gotten great products, actually. That's why people continue to buy it. We're not pay pigs. We are customers. We are fans. We are supporters of the work. You keep using this word like it means something. Again, why do you care so much about what other people spend their money on? Why? Because they're not spending their money on your garbage book? And I haven't read it, but it must be so bad for you, the sales of your book, that you have to trash somebody else's sales of their book. So... 
scrolling on up here please stop making fun of isom i paid a lot of money to win the culture award you keep saying this you keep regurgitating this over and over again probably because again like i already said no one must be buying your book if this is what you're regurgitating about a comic book that you claimed already to care not care about by the way and yet you're still crying about it to this day but remember i made a video where he was where this man took a review of isom 2 made by this person red strider 2099 so he has actually responded because people have misinterpreted his honest review of ISOM number two. So we're going to go ahead and listen to what he had to say. Let's go turn the volume. Engage with you, especially when you do nothing but call me a, uh, a pay pig or a cultist or, you know, here's the thing. I have never come, my. Yes, they call you a pay pig because you're paying for a product you want to buy and you're a cultist because you are a fan of something criticism of Eric July's comic was not was all in good faith because I didn't insult him for writing it I didn't insult him for creating this book I didn't I wasn't speaking out of anger I wasn't speaking I was speaking if anything disappointment because I was I had in my mind of what it uh, how of what it could have been and that wasn't what that wasn't what ended up coming out on the page and that's okay I still like it I will still support it because I believe in the vision of the I believe in the vision of the company and I believe in this world still. But you people are so sad. You're so sad. Like I can't I can only Now he's referring to Vicky verse and Buster Baxter. I can only look at you. I can only look at you with pity. I don't I don't even care about you to look at you with disgust. You're just pitiable. Because you have made it a moral issue. You have made it such a moral outrage that we like a collection of printed, painted, lettered pages bound together in glue that we paid for willingly. He basically broke down what a comic is just to make them sound silly. Now, I would suggest, you know, after I go through this, I suggest... People go ahead and subscribe and check out his review on his channel. Please go ahead and do that, if you don't mind. Lest we forget, this is not a grift. This is not an elaborate theft of my money. I paid for a comic book and I got one in return, you idiots. That's the opposite of a grift. You said I saw number two would never be released. That Eric July would just pop, pocket the money and walk away. Well, guess what didn't happen? And that we never see another issue again. Well, now we have the Sasuke sisters writing Yaira. We have Chuck Dixon writing Alpha Core, and whatever else comes along. And we also have Isom number three, 12 pages in. 12 pages have been completed for Isom three. This is happening whether you like it or not. And people like me are going to stay here and keep reviewing it whether you like it or not. And fine, come in my comment section, come in my Twitter account, please amp up my engagement. I don't care. I invite it. And that's the thing I say all the time about the haters that are always in my comment section and are always in my Twitter posts. All you're doing is wrapping up, wrap, ramping up my engagement on those platforms. And you think you're, you're not helping me in some way. You're absolutely helping me by commenting, liking, disliking, and all, and posting for Twitter or X or whatever it's called and you act like you're not helping my engagement on these platforms you keep saying you're not helping me but you are you don't want to haters don't want to admit when they're helping you but they're helping you and I will meme you and I will make fun of you because you don't matter you are nothing more than a reply guy and, of course, like I said already, the two people that are specifically are using the word pay pig are Buster Baxter and Vickyverse. Well, we, the person we like to call the ball-headed wench. Or specifically, Eric calls her the ball-headed wench. I just use it because it's funny because it's kind of true. But, yes, this person, I'd appreciate if you watch his review, watch his video, and give him some support. Subscribe to his channel. Give him some support. He deserves it for calling out these fools. Well, now we're going to move over to actual fandom. 
who, of course, he's, he's talking about just some guy here, saying that they made a video on him and misrepresented him. I don't think anybody can misrepresent you better than you. Your terrible movie takes saying that Training Day isn't better than all these Guardians movies is, is laughable. The fact that you're just doing this. Now you're calling this Oliver Anthony person. I don't know who that is. You're calling them an AstroTurf now. You're making weird memes. You're making even more accusations or stuff up about Gary from Neurotic saying, yeah, the 52-year-old former distributor who spends most of his time lying about how Disney and every product it produces is failing because it is there's no lies to be had when he presents the facts that are out there by access media information that is given by access media definitely a lie numbers like box office is out there to present to people but I'm sorry that you, it will break your narrative of everything is succeeding because yeah, you never show things like this. And you don't know how box office numbers really work. And has for years. The guy who pals around with employees of Blaze Media. Of course he's talking about. I'm pretty sure he's talking about Glenn Beck and Eric July. And who has worked with PragerU. What's the problem with working with PragerU? Still don't. Who cares? Are you working with PragerU? Are you working with people? Are you not working with people? Probably not because no one cares that you exist. He's the real voice of fandom. Yes, a guy who under actually understands how fandom works. Unlike you, you claim to under you claim to you claim to understand that how fandom works. You claim to say these things, but you really don't understand how fandom actually works. Gary from Nerdrotic, people like him actually understand how fandom works because he's a fan of things. He is an actual fan of things. You are an actual grifter. The, you like to call everyone else this word that are not doing these things. But you are the one that's actually grifting. So. Star Wars fans when Luke tries to, viol to do this to his father. Star Wars fans when Luke momentarily drew his lightsaber on instinct when he sensed danger but immediately stopped himself because he didn't want to hurt his nephew. This was because this was much better. This scene was done way better than this scene. Because actual Star Wars fans understand the character of Luke Skywalker. And clearly, you do not. You do not understand the character of Luke Skywalker. Clearly. Which, by the way, he swung the lightsaber at his nephew, you fool. That's not something Luke Skywalker does. The difference is... The, the, his nephew was sleeping, whereas Vader was took over galaxies and destroyed planets. Now, I understand Kylo Ren destroyed planets too, but so did Vader. So, anyway. And then we have this. This is the last part. Ripperverse puts first appearances on the cover to try to inflate value similar to what Marvel and DC do, right? They do the same exact thing where they write first appearance of characters on, on front covers of books. How is this any different? He's trying to give people that sense of nostalgia they had with those types of comics, with comic books from the mainstream. Based on characters that nobody knows, first appearance is a secondary market term, but he sends the book all jacked up so it loses value, even if it had any beyond cover price, which they do. You just don't want to see it because you're an idiot. I, I've shown plenty of videos where the aftermarket value of ISOM books has been five, six, seven times the original market price. Now this person who makes a video, right, shows this. But one thing I do want to point out for uh, before we go any farther, this book right here came in this right here. And it came bagged and boarded and just in there loose, shaking around. So if uh, any of your shipping department needs to know, you need smaller mailers or to wrap them properly. I've never had an issue with these mailers, by the way. Properly, because this book came damaged. Just throwing that out. Now he's got ISOM issue number two, cover B. Here's my ISOM issue number two, cover B. Flawless book. No damage. Here's the part where... 
you s no damage to that corner of the book. And I'm pretty sure if he had damage, all he has to do is contact Eric himself. He's very easy to contact and say, hey, my book came damaged. Could you send me another one? And I'm sure, or you could contact the customer support of the Riververse. I'm sure they'd be happy to help you. They've helped me before with orders and they're very nice people. But just kind of want to, this guy essentially wants to cause drama with this part. With this part of someone's review. Which is so weird. I don't understand why these people always like to cause pointless drama with pointless things. That can easily be fixed. But I guess it's all part of that supposed grift you say everyone else has. Hey, hey Dane. Can't wait to roast you tomorrow. Thank you all for checking out this video. I really do appreciate all the new subscribers, returning subscribers, new viewers, returning viewers. If you do like this video, hit that like button, comment below what you feel about all this. Subscribe for more content. Hit the bell for notifications. Set the bell to all. That way you get notifications anytime I post a new video. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.